So I see that you're busy. Uh, <laughs> uh, so do you uh, have any question before to start about the, because la last, um, last week we did uh, PCA. So yep. we left uh, to talk about clustering. Yeah, I'm sure you uh, were aware <laughs> about the topic. So have you got any questions to start? Would you like to talk about something particular or should I just go to the, the few things that I thought that were important about clustering? I, uh, I watched the video, let's dive right in. Okay. Right, uh, so um, uh, th this is the second part of chapter 12, clustering. So last week we did the PCA. Uh, this time we go to uh, K-means and uh, hierarchical clustering. So these are two best known clustering approaches. Uh, one more thing, we would like to have a little discussion about clustering observation on basis of the features. So first questions, so the question that may arise are, what means for two or more observation to be similar or different? And what is the difference between PCA and clustering? First, so PCA, uh, principal component analysis, we are talking about unsupervised analysis looks to find a low dimensional representation of the observations that explain a good fraction of the variance. While clustering looks to find homogeneous subgroups among the observations. Let's see uh, k-means first. So, we seek to partition the observation into a pre-specified clustering number of clusters. So we define with k-means the number of, of clusters that we require for our data. We specify the clusters. Then, then uh, we want to uh, maybe see how they differ if we change the number of clusters. So step to k means uh, are the size, the number of clusters, and then the k means algorithm will assign each observation to exactly one of the k clusters we have defined. So we start with C1 CK elements, which denote the sets containing the indices of the observation in each cluster. The rule of thumb for good clustering is one for which the within cluster variation it should be as small as possible. This within cluster variation, it's a measure of, the, of our indices. And we, we're supposed to, so what to, to achieve a good clustering of our data, we need to minimize this measure, the sum of this measure. How do we do this? So in our to, to make uh, k, uh, k means, we use a function, uh, the k means function. And here is an example. Um, so for example, if we uh, create a matrix of 50 elements, so we randomize uh, normal, normal values, 50 times two made of two columns, so that we, in a way that we have uh, uh, this matrix X with two columns, X1 and the X2, made of 50 elements, but each uh, column, is different, so they are grouped um, 1 to 25, 25 to 50. Um, here I've had uh, a first uh, vector with the variant. For example, if we are talking about 
in a real uh, world examples if you are talking if we are talking about um, elements which have uh, variants so in a way that we can uh, what when we group uh, our data we can see uh, for variant a and variant b how they uh, group differently. So I've added a, uh, a colon, uh, a vector named variant with a, a replication of A and B, each 25 elements. So um, the first simple plot is this one here and colored by variant. So we have a certain number of elements so, of observation and um, because they uh, belong to uh, subgroups such as A and B, when we call them and we make a visualization, we can see they are grouped. Uh, they are, there are two different groups. So now uh, we like to, we don't know that, that, let's imagine that we go back and uh, we don't know how they, are, they can be grouped or how they are grouped. So we use k-mean, k-means function. Um, we establish, for example, that we want two groups. Uh, so we use the k-means function with the x uh, observations for two groups. Um, we can even specify a certain start, you can start from a certain level of our observations. And then uh, with the, it, the, if we just see what this uh, um, k-means out, uh, output is, uh, uh, it's like uh, the output of a model. Okay, so that's some information. What we need at the moment, uh, just to focalize on the grouping things, uh, we can use the broom uh, package, the tidy function on the result of the k-means function on the output and see that we, we have uh, um, the information that we are interested in. So the grouping of the uh, two vectors, the size of each group, and then we have these other elements, uh, this width inces, and uh, the specification of the cluster names, so the, like cluster number one, cluster number two. What I found interesting uh, is the specification of uh, three, th these three function tidy that I just mentioned, then glance and augment, which uh, they turns out to be very useful for retrieving information from the decay function when we have applied. So for example, if we use the augment function to retrieve the output of our k-means uh, uh, function, um, we can plot it. So basically it transforms the, the, the result into a data frame in a way that we can use it with ggplot. So, and color specifying that we want them to be colored by clusters, we achieve the same result as we had before. So now, um, this is uh, um, the way we can do it when we don't know how the, the data, our observation will be good. We specify the number of clusters and we use uh, the k-means function and then we augment and plot specifying color clusters so we can see the two clusters, how they do. Okay, now another situation in uh, real world data can be that even if we have decided to do for two groups, uh, they may be not uh, satisfying. So there may be other, uh, they may be good if grouped within three groups, for example, or four, not many because otherwise it becomes difficult to understand. But we can try, for example, this is from the 
Emil uh, um, chapter, so using the detailed models, the solution, etc. So we can use this um, uh, map function with k means in a way that we can retrieve the values of the witnesses. Um, this way, using the, the map model, the glance function, and the result is this. So basically, we have the now a, a list of possible uh, grouping, the k means, uh, from one to ten, and the total witnesses as a result. So what do we do with this? If, for example, I select, uh, I want, I don't need many, many uh, groupings. So I just like to focus from two to four, like to see my data, how they, how they group. If I decide for K means uh, with two groups, three groups, uh, four groups. So what I do is filtering K with, with, between uh, two and four, then pull out the model and pluck. That means I select just the first, the first grouping, then pluck two, the second grouping, then pluck three, the third grouping. Then I do three plots. This is my long way to do. I, I'm sure it can be done better. But I do three plots with the three elements, and then with patchwork, I display them all. So same data as before, exactly the same. We have two groups, three groups, and four groups. So now in real world, when you deal with data, you think about what are your data what they are telling you about, what are you searching for? So then at that point, you may want to choose between these three different type of grouping and say, I rather prefer the second one with three groups more than, I don't know, two groups or four groups. So you, you can have a visualization and decide. So this is basically K means and what is for. Take your data, um, analyze your data by grouping them, uh, setting the number of groups before. Now, what is hierarchical clustering? Okay, hierarchical clustering, it's different. Okay, so just for her to say, it's a tree like visualization. So quite different from a scatter plot, which is colored by grouping differently. But then you can even turn around with the hierarchical uh, clustering and go back. So in a way that you can then visualize it uh, as a scatter plot once you have decided for it. So what is the difference between K-means and hierarchical clustering? Hierarchical clustering, uh, in hierarchical clustering, the number of clusters are unknown. So you don't need to set the number of clusters in advance. Usually it is, usually it is a tree-like visual representation of the observation, and this is called, called a dendrogram. This allows you to understand about the clusters for each possible number of clusters from one to n. So now you don't need to, it depends by the type of your data and where you want to go with, with them. So the algorithm for hierarchical clustering defines some sort of dissimilarity measure between each pair of observations with the use of the Euclidean distance most of the times, but the, the statistically speaking, 
other uh, ways to calculate this distance between two observations. So some consideration on how to interpret a dendrogram results. In general, there are two n minus one possible reordering of the dendrogram. So when n, where n is the number of leaves. So what are the leaves? What are the, what is the dendrogram? We will see a bit later. So for this reason, it's important to keep in mind that the position of the two fused branches could be swapped without affecting the meaning of the dendrogram. This is taken from the book completely. Uh, and that it would be incorrect to conclude that two observations are similar just on the basis that they are near each other on the dendrogram. This is very important because, you know, it's a tree-like visualization. And when you see two elements uh, uh, near each other, you might think they are close to each other, so they are the same thing. In, they're not necessarily true. So to make a hierarchical clustering, we use the H class function, which defines this similarity between two clusters. What if one or both of the cluster contains multiple observations? Okay, so practice is the best, uh, the best way to understand the thing, but uh, theory lets you, you know, approach the practice a little bit better. So the concept of this similarity between a pair of observation need to be extended to a pair of groups. So now you, in that case, you do not focalize just on single elements, but on groups, groups of observations. So in case you have multiple observations, you think about the grouping and how they are dissimilar or so different. So this extension is achieved by developing the notion of linkage. The linkage, it's very important within three like visualization. And this defines the dissimilarity between two groups of, of observations, not just between two observations. So the four most common types of linkage are complete, average, single, and centroid. I've left this out, but that's okay. So this is the, um, this is taken from the, from the book. Uh, there, there is some, some explanation. Uh, um, I, I, I won't read them, um, read it through. Uh, we may go back to that. I, I like to show you an example first um, that Emil has uh, um, posted in his uh, website. So, for example, we use the same observation as before. Our X vector, this R norm, about composed of 50 elements and everything, just as the same as before. Now, I had to specify stats because there's some conflict with tidy models and tidyverse and everything. So it might uh, throw an error. So you, it's better if you specify. So we use the dist function, which is the, from the start. What this does is consider the distance most uh, on um, by default using the Euclidean distance. And then we apply the H class function. Now, I, I, there are four, uh, sorry, there are three uh, linkage method here um, for you to see the difference. So, and how you specify the different linkage methods is with methods using the method option complete, 
average and single. Okay, so now we have three different trees, uh, dendrograms. Um, and uh, we want to see them out, how they look like. So finally, we finally see a tree like visualization, which is this, and it is a dendrogram. We can uh, easily plot it to visualize with this f bids dend function from the facto extra package. We can use this function. There may be other functions. There's, mm, there's a, other function on the base R. Okay, so, uh, so inside this function, we use the complete, may, um, the first class that we did it, the average, and the single. And this is the visualization. So this is the first one, complete. So all, the, all our data are represented through a dendrogram. So now we cannot draw conclusion about the similarity of two observation based on the proximity along the horizontal axis. And this I've already said, you know, okay, eight and 33 are not similar. But you can identify the differences by looking at the difference, the position on the vertical axis. Okay, so you can see that A is different from 33 because they belong to two different branches, but even if because they have a different high level. Okay, so we can even have a, a better look at this uh, uh, dendrogram and um, see, for example, that 12 is two are close to each other, but they have a different high. So they're not that close. Maybe two and 10, they're quite similar to each other. Okay, so hierarchy refers to the fact that clusters obtained by cutting the dendrogram at a given eight are necessarily nested within the clusters obtained by cutting the dendrogram at any greater eight. So basically, if we cut the dendrogram here, oops, at this level, we have some result. If we cut the dendrogram at this other level, we have other results. So we can group our data this way. Now we see this, the same data, but instead of uh, ask for hierarchical clustering to be complete with method complete, we do the average. So there is a slightly difference compared to this one. As you can see now, they are grouped by average of their value. And um, finally, if we go back here, because I didn't uh, may put them all, you can see where is it? That if we do single instead of complete or average, but we do single. So we want one, like two groups, one with one element and all the other on, on another side. If, for example, if we think that one observation can be a key observation, so we can use this to see which one is the one that will be uh, the single one, okay? So we can do with meta single. 
to achieve this visualization and see that this is different compared to all the others. Even if it's close to, like this is number 16, it's close to number six, but as you can see, the high is different from all the others. So this is one element separate from the rest. So this, this is um, the, the thing. Then all the other things are uh, for you to improve the knowledge about uh, uh, K-means, hierarchical classing. We can even do some more um, examples. For example, if I scale the data, what does it change something or not? So scaling means centering the data. So means standardize uh, my data in a way that they all, all my observation have uh, mean zero. If I do this and then uh, I do the, uh, the visualization without specifying the methods, I obtain again the same visualization as before, but now data are standardized. So practice is the key on data and see what, what is the best. So this is, uh, for me, the, the, are the most important things of this chapter. Um, would you like, uh, okay, these are the, the, the description of the linkage. There's even centroid. Uh, and then much more to see in the EMIL, for example, using the tidy models. And there's a couple of examples here uh, to go through the chapter. Yeah. Looks good. Any personal experience? Any sharing of examples? Um, in, in, in practice, it's important to know how these things work. And, and I think in, in, uh, uh, like biology or, 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 uh, laboratories where they have thousands or tens of thousands of features they, these, these tools are used a lot. Um, so it's important to know they exist. Um, I, I don't have much. Um, in, in terms of examples where I've used them at all, uh, data sets are um, more clear in a physics-based world. There's, uh, I, I don't need to apply this, but uh, it's got potential. Yeah. So yeah, it depends by the type of data uh, that you deal with, and then. They may be very useful um, for grouping so in a way that you can, yeah. It's not often that I have data sets that are all numeric, right? Uh -huh. um, and, and if you introduce um, categorical effects, um, then it, there's, there's other, other challenges. Um, um, so these, these are pure numeric clustering. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, then, if you would, uh, obviously uh, have a look at the chapter and in the lab, for example, uh, there's some other uh, interesting information, such as the cut tree function. So you can then modify your results as, as needed. Um, even the dist function uh, is quite interesting because it transforms the, your data. And then um, besides the fact that you can use it now on a dendrogram, you can even use it somehow differently. 
Uh, and here are some practical examples for, for you to see how, how to use them. So I think it's uh, the best way to go inside the topic uh, to understand what we are talking about is uh, with this. And um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we don't quite, quite it's, 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 <laughs> we, if we want to, we can even, uh, um, uh, I don't know, like conclude with, with this chapter here, or we might want to go through the example. What do you think? I think this material is pretty clear. It's not difficult at all. Um, I'm willing to conclude here. It's yeah. that's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, so we left one chapter, and then if you want a uh, the, the, uh, conclusion, uh, final discussion, if you want, otherwise not. So there's um, uh, the, the the last chapter. Okay. Multiple testing. Yeah. <laughs> which is the best one uh, <laughs> in absolute. Um, and um, it's a very interesting chapter. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, uh, do, do you? So, we, we conclude here and then we see what we do next week. Okay. If, if you all are available or if we need to skip the next week and go to the, the following, uh, would you like to do a part of this chapter maybe? Um, so I'm interested, but I, I would have to, it would have to be two weeks for me. Um, uh, I'm, I'm swamped. <laughs> right I now. imagine. Yeah. So, so is the conference ended yet? No. No, that's 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 also happening today. <laughs> yeah, uh, I know. Okay. So we'll see you in the Slack. Okay, see you in the Slack next week, most probably. So, yes. Okay. Yeah. Have Bye a great now. week. Bye bye. You too. Bye.